There are cities in the United States that should be on hospice right now. These once thriving communities and commerce centers are withering away like a lemon that fell off a tree six months back. Decades ago, cities like Detroit, St. Louis, and New Orleans represented the United States at its best. These days, most of us are trying to forget these cities exist. That's most of us. There are some people, normally the people that live there, think that they're just fine. And those are the people that could live in an industrial park between a refinery and a sewage treatment plant and tell people it's great. Those people suffer from what is known as Stockholm Syndrome. Cities that are dying always have some, if not all, of these problems. Terrible infrastructure, out of control crime, extreme poverty, mind-blowing unemployment, shrinking job markets, and fewer employers every single year. Today we look at the cities that will be the next Gary, Indiana or Detroit, Michigan. Let's take a look. Number 10, Houston, Texas. Houston by far is the worst of the big cities in Texas. I mean, for a whole host of problems. Let's start with their violent crime rate. Their violent crime rate is 221% above the national average. That's kind of rough. Is it the worst in the United States? No, but it's getting there. It's on the rise, and it's been on the rise for the last three years straight. The poverty rate in Houston is pretty bad too. In the US, the average poverty rate right now is about 15%. In Houston, it's 20.6%. The rest of Texas, it's 16 but it's not just the crime and poverty. The heat, humidity, and hurricanes have made this great city a less than desirable place to live. As climate change worsens, hurricanes will become more frequent, and so will heat waves. I mentioned to a guy one time that you need some serious air conditioning if you live in Houston. He said, no, it's perfectly fine. You can get by without air conditioning. I was like, yeah, if you're a freaking lizard or a snake, I'm sure it's perfectly comfortable. On top of all that good stuff, Houston is considered one of the least walkable cities in the United States and their obesity rate shows it. You have to have a car if you're going to live in Houston, which younger people aren't into like millennials, Gen X, and baby boomers were. If you take the top 30 cities in the U.S., Houston is ranked 23rd for public transportation. This will play a big part in future migration to Houston. One of the most common emails I get are from younger people asking me about different cities and how their public transit is. I pay attention to public transit and I can tell you, I've been to Houston's, I've seen it, I've never ridden on it, but I've looked at it, it sucks. If you want to get a house in Houston, the average home value is $260,000. That's up 0.3% from last year. Number nine, Watertown, New York. Part of Watertown's problem is that it's right outside of Fort Drum, and that is a major army infantry base. I was in the army, I was in the infantry, and we don't make good decisions a lot of times. Watertown in general is just a rundown city. Been there a few times in my life. My oldest son was stationed there for a couple years back in 2016 and 17. And the place has a lot of poverty, and it's obvious when you go there. 21.6% of their population lives below the poverty line. New York is 15.5%, and like we said earlier, the US rate is 15.1%. With poverty comes crime, and they've got a lot of it. 104% above the national average is their total crime rate. Their violent crime rate's only 70% above the national average. Bravo, Watertown. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the Watertown area, not just the city, lost about 7,000 jobs. Not many of them have come back. On top of all that good stuff, Watertown is in one of the snowiest areas in the United States. Their infrastructure kind of blows, they don't have a good public transit system, and Area Vibes gives their schools a D grade. About the whole public transit, you'll see this in this video a lot because that is the future of most cities. Whether cities realize it now or not, if you don't have a good public transit system for the new generations coming in, your city's not going to grow like it should. If you want to get a home in Watertown, New York, the average home value is $182,000. It hasn't gone up or down in the last few years, so kind of stagnant. Number eight, Erie, Pennsylvania. I've been to Erie, Pennsylvania, oh, it's been years, but I, I kind of liked it. I could see that the neighborhoods and stuff were a little bit run down, but areas in the city, they look decent. What's killing them is their employment and their poverty numbers. The first thing is their income per capita is about $22,000 a year. The average for Pennsylvania is 30,000 and the national average is about 31,000. Erie's another place where they shed a lot of jobs during the pandemic and not enough of them came back. 25.3% of Erie, Pennsylvania's population lives below the poverty line. That's high. Let's say you want to settle down in Erie and get some property. 
The average home value is $168,000. That's up 7.7% from last year. Number seven, Rochester, New York. I'm going to get some grief over this one. I got a bunch of family that lives in Rochester, and anytime I've ever brought them up in a negative light, I get some Facebook messages. So you guys will know what I'll be doing tomorrow. Rochester is another place that has far too much snow than they really need or they really want. Rochester sits on Lake Ontario, which means it's going to get a lot of snow. You have the lake effect. So when it's snowing, the closer you are to a major body of water, you're going to get more snow, frost, whatever. When you look at all the different stats of Rochester, it doesn't really paint a good picture of the place. In Rochester, 30.4% of their population lives below the poverty line. Their total crime rate is 86% above the national average. Violent crime rate is 98% above. And just property crime, people stealing stuff from your porch, things of that nature, that's 83% above the national average. It's hard to catch porch pirates with your ring camera because everyone's wearing a ski mask. The good news is if you want to buy a home in Rochester, the median home value is $202,000. That's not terrible. Number six, Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut is like the poster child for despair and disbelief. It's in New England, so theoretically, it should be a really nice place to live. Hartford's breaking all the rules. You know, different religions they have, the more you suffer makes up for bad that you've done in this life or past lives or something like that. Hartford's a good place to move if you're working on some kind of penance from past life. Like, I don't know, you gave Charlie horses to a nun that was working a soup kitchen, trying to cleanse your karma so you move to Hartford so you can suffer some. The funny thing about Hartford is their crime rate has gotten better over the last few years since I've been doing these videos. A couple years ago, I was looking back on a video and their crime rate, their total crime rate was like 92% above the national average. Right now, it's only 31%. So that is better. But what got worse was the cost of living. So as the crime rate went down, the cost of living went up. Maybe if you went out and gave a nun a Charlie horse, that'd be considered a crime. Crime rate go up, prices go back down. Who knows? The infrastructure of Hartford sucks. That's a big problem. The weather is horrible. Their jobs outlook is miserable. And 28% of their population lives below the poverty line. This city might actually have more Dunkin' Donuts than Starbucks. There's like one on every corner, it seems like. The good news is the average home value in Hartford is about $172,000, $171,874 to be exact. That's up 11.4% from last year. So it's getting more expensive and they don't have a bunch of jobs for people. I've heard insurance companies are pulling out of Hartford and Hartford's like the mecca for insurance companies. Number five, Buffalo, New York. If you don't know Buffalo blows, I'm here to tell you it blows bad. It's not Detroit suckage yet, and it's not East St. Louis bad, but it's getting there. And this is another one that is just wrecked with snow every single winter. This is one of those cities that is actually looking forward to climate change. They hope the planet warms up a little bit. Buffalo is another place that all their crime stats are getting up there. Their total crime rate is 70% above the national average. Violent crime rate is 100% above the national average. And property crime is 64% above. It didn't used to be this way. I mean, it's been a very long time since Buffalo was a really, really nice place to live, but it's just getting worse. And that's going to help this city basically die. 28.3% of their population lives below the poverty line. That is up three points from 2019 before the pandemic started and five points from 2016. You're moving in the wrong direction, Buffalo. Their cost of living is going up and their home prices are going up. Right now, the average home value is about 215,000 in Buffalo, New York. That's up 5.1% from last year. Number four, St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, you know, it's weird. So they've had little parts of the city that are getting better, like downtown. They're doing a lot of work, at least in parts of it. There's other parts that just still look like the backdrop for a Mad Max movie. And this is kind of sad. St. Louis is a historic city. Not a lot of people realize how important it was to the United States, or at least the western half of the United States. This was the jumping off point. That's why they have the Gateway Arch there. They called it the Gateway to the West, and it was. This is where everyone got to as they headed west, and this went on for years. St. Louis was like a giant Walmart where everyone stopped to get supplies for their travel into the unknown. 
back before Google Maps, back before really any maps. I mean, when you left St. Louis, you had one major rule. Have the sun at your back in the morning and the sun in your face in the afternoon. This will get you west. The crime in St. Louis is ridiculous. The total crime rate is 275% above national average. The violent crime rate is 298% above and property crime is 271% above. You're not safe. Your stuff's not safe. If you're living there, I don't know, put the sun to the back of your head tomorrow morning and leave. One thing that is getting better in St. Louis, their poverty rate is actually getting better. Right now, about 20% of their population lives below the poverty line. Four years ago, it was 22%. Eight years ago, it was 27%. If you move to St. Louis, the home prices are pretty decent right now, but they've been going up. So I think it's going to be not worth it here in the next couple of years. Currently, the average home value is $168,000. That's up 6.6% from last year, and that's up 8% from two years ago. It's just going to keep climbing. The place still sort of sucks. Number three, Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska has been kind of fading away on us for a few years now, and I think it's just going to get worse. First of all, it's an older than average population. And as retirees start to go to the great beyond, you know, take the permanent dirt nap, the population is going to shrink because most of the young people leave Anchorage as soon as they can, and not many young people are moving to Anchorage. So this is just a migration pattern that's going to kill this city. In the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to see big differences in Anchorage unless something drastic changes here. Now, Anchorage over the decades has always gained population since the 1930 census when they first looked in on it. They gained 22% there. They had other decades where they gained like 222%, 294%. In the 1980s, they gained 262%. And then it's slowly been going down since the 1980 census. In the 2020 census, they lost 0.2% of their population, which isn't a lot. But when you look back at their history and how many people they'd gained, that's a big difference. In 2022, they lost 1.4% of their population just that one year. This is just going to continue. One of the biggest problems, which is kind of odd for a place like this, is the cost of living. And if you've watched this channel long enough, you know that anything Alaska has got to be delivered that isn't like moose meat or beer or something like that. Salmon's easy to get here also. So things are expensive. Go to the grocery store. And in my experience, I was in Saldatna in 2019. Just a rough estimate. I thought I was, I bought some things while I was there and I thought I was going to pay like 30 bucks. That's what I figured going by, you know, what I was used to in Oregon. It was about $58. Now, the good thing about Anchorage is only 8.8% .8 of their population lives below the poverty line. That is a plus. That's the lowest of just about any major city in the United States. But their crime rate sucks. Their total crime rate is 68% above the national average. Violent crime rate is 211% above. And their property crime is 41% above. So they aren't stealing your stuff as much as they're just beating you up and killing you. The other reason I think Anchorage is dying is the home prices. The average home value in Anchorage, Alaska is $373,000. That's up 3.6% over the last year. It's been growing for like six years straight. That's pricing a lot of people that used to look at Anchorage and Alaska as a cheaper alternative alternative for the lower 48. It's not so much anymore. It's still below the national average, but it's too expensive for what you're getting. Number two, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge has been a nightmare for a very long time. This is the only city I've ever been to where the bell ringer in a Santa suit out in front of a store wore a bulletproof vest. I'm not even joking. He didn't even have it on the inside of the Santa suit. He put it on the outside. All three of Baton Rouge crime stats are almost 200% above the national average. Violent, just total crime, and property crime. That's obscene. Almost 25% of Baton Rouge population lives below the poverty line, 24.4% to be exact. And their unemployment rate normally is about 20% higher than the national average. I'd like this city to be better. It's beautiful, just freaking dangerous. But if you want to buy a house here, my first suggestion is choose another place. But if you do end up wanting to buy one here, the average home value is $214,000. That's up 1.6% from last year. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving someplace else, there's a link for home and money in the description area below. They can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the United States. They got a whole bunch of other cool things if you're thinking about home buying on their website too. All right, on to number one.
And number one, Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi is a nightmare. This is where Stephen King vacations when he has writer's block. That's how bad it is. The infrastructure is horrible here. The crime is horrible here. The poverty is horrible here. The weather is horrible here. Last time I was there, I got this horrible rash. It's just not a pleasant place. This is how bad the violent crime rate is in Jackson, Mississippi. They don't report it. Yes, the Jackson, Mississippi police don't report their violent crime rate. It's like they think it's some kind of HIPAA violation if they do. Most estimates do have it around 100% above the national average. Their property crime is only 35% above, so they're just hurting each other, not really stealing from each other. When you have poverty issues and employment issues like they have in Jackson, Mississippi, that's usually what you get, a lot of property crime. Jackson's unemployment rate usually sits somewhere around 40% above the national average, and about 25% of their population lives below the poverty line. Now, whenever a place sucks as hard as Jackson does, there's one benefit to it. The cost of living is through the floor, and Jackson, it's pretty low especially when you look at the houses. The average home value here is $62,000. $62,000. You could afford that 30-year mortgage as a part-time Walmart greeter. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.